Hi guys, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. We are here at the HWBot OC gathering for the 10 years of HWBot. And I'm here now with Jungfro. Hi Jungfro, how are you doing? Good man, how are you? Good, good, quite good. Um, you're from Australia, but let us know a bit about yourself. Which team are you and what are you doing in life? Okay, I'm, um, I'm from Team AU. I'm from Adelaide, Australia, which is at the very south of um, Australia. And I, I work in IT. I'm an IT manager. So um, I do servers and storage and all that sort of stuff. And you're a pro overclicker too. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> I don't not not as a job, but yeah, for sure. So we are here at the HWBot OC gathering anniversary. Uh, what do you think about these kind of events? What was the the, the main difference with the competitions? The, this is the best event I've been to for sure. Um, I mean, there's there's no pressure here. You know, it's just friends catching up, having fun, uh, all helping each other to push the systems. And you know, this, it's not a competition. It's just about. You know, again, having fun, uh, all mixing together and, and, and just, just a great event. There was a really good vibe here and people from different vendors just hanging out. And yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. So you, you did actually mix up with the 8-pack to broke the Firestrike Extreme World Records. Can you tell us more about that? Because you spent four days on that, on that benchmark yeah, and that yeah. setup. We, we'd been planning to do this. Um, we we're hoping to do it with graphics card we've already got. But we had problems when we, we got here. So we had to get new cards, bin them, do all the tests, and, and slowly work it up. And, and then just as everything worked, the motherboard died, and we had to insulate a new motherboard. So uh, it all came together in the end. But, you know, this sort of thing, a, a lot of the time it's months in preparation. And, and, and it sort of was for us, but um, we sort of had to condense that into, you know, three or two days of work. So, but, you know, it, it happened in the end. We got a score out, so good. You know, it, it all works. <laughs> And that's the world record. That's it. We got, uh, we got the world record by about 300 points. And, you know, y you look at the record um, only uh, uh, five days ago or seven days ago when it was 1,500 points lower. So it's been broken three times this week. And um, it, it, that's what happens when there's competition and there's, you know, a lot of guys around. So it's, uh, it's amazing. It, it's good to knock that one out and, uh, you know, can put that bon one behind me and move on to something else now. <laughs> Actually, talking about all the overclocking events, where the HWBot anniversary gathering was right after the Computex, and Computex has so many overclocking events. So, what do you think about all these uh, overclockers getting invited to show off and be basically like overclocking booth babes? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's fun. Like, um, if I didn't do this, like, there's no opportunity to hang out with you know Elmore and Eight Pack and. And, you know, even the Team AU boys, I don't get a lot of opportunity to hang out with them. And I, I really love just every day a different vendor, different hardware, you know, um, exchanging knowledge, exchanging different perspective on thing. And it, it, I'm really tired by the end of the week, but it's, it's one of the best weeks of the year. So I think it's great. And, and this year is better than ever. There's more overclockers. There's more events. You know, we had the Intel event, the Kingston event. Um, what else do we have? You know, the G-Skill G -Skill G -Skill event, uh, plus, uh, you know, Gigabyte, um, plus the G-Skill overclocking side, uh, as well as the competition. So, yeah, it's a massive year. And I, I think this is going to, uh, you know, happen more in the future. And these are going to be more prize money, bigger events, more overclockers here. So, yeah, I, it's been an awesome week. Talking about the, the prize money and the, this kind of even getting more and more attention, um, do you, what do you think about the overclocking to become more like an eSport with like the following and the commentary and the, all this involved? It, it seems like that's the direction we're headed. The, the Intel event was, was quite professional in the way it was held. That, that's one of the best competitions that I've seen. Um, the the G-Skill event in terms of benchmarks and difficulty was very tough um, and, and it was a great event, but in terms of you know, money thrown in an event and resources, the intel and, and commentary running and, you know, the condensed window and uh, all, all these things that, that are, are similar to an esports event. It, it was a really great event. And I, I think this is the, the way we're headed now. Maybe people are going to have, you know, a, a, a one sponsor and, and get monetary sponsorship and hardware from that. Because, you know, it's, we've seen it's happened this year. Mm. And, and it's probably going to happen more that way. And people will come to Computex be sponsored by a vendor with hardware and resources and they'll go just to the competitions you know for that vendor basically for the week and they get to keep whatever prize money they get so i think it's it's starting to get this is it's quite exciting in the direction it's headed and this year's a 
you know, it's not one step, it's 10 steps from where we were last year. And, and if we take half of that next year, we're starting to get into that esports sort of mode. So it's still small what we're doing compared to esports, but it's moving. And, um, you know, I think you, you, there's a lot to thank for HW but for that and, and the push they've given over the last 12 months. And, you know, events like this, it, it, it's, it's really moving our community on at a fast pace, I think. Actually, uh, Tessie Brugot have been a, a big part of that with the competitive overclocking and so forth. And what did Tessie Brugot change in the past 10 years for you? Uh, what did it mean to me? Or yeah, yeah uh, well, that's where I started. Um, that's where I started overclocking, and and you know I I used to do the enthusiast sort of overclocking, and you know work your way up to the top three, number one, and then you know move to pro and try and do the same thing. And it, it's it's pretty much pushed me the whole way, and it's it's got me sponsors along the way, and it's got me you know motivated me to get records along the way, and you know it, that's not. 100% of what overclocking is but it, it, it binds the community together and it, it is a platform that allows us to do what we want to do so you know it's it's they're doing a great job there and um, it's I'm, I'm hoping again that'll keep pr moving forward in the future and it, it's you know you can see an event like this you know they're, they're feeding us and everything so it's uh, it's it's very well organized and yeah it's it's a great thing for the community. Uh, although we had a lot of uh, followership on the on the live stream uh, for the especially for today with like more than 2000 people watching yeah, uh, watching live when you broke the world record there was like more than more than 1800 people watching when you broke the world wow. record actually um, what do you think about this kind of uh, live coverage with the commentary and uh, what what could be improved in all that um, it's Again, that, that's something that has been steadily improving over the years. It, it needs resources. It, um, it's the sort of thing that um, a manufacturer has to get behind and decide they, they want to do. Um, I, I like the idea of having, for, for this sort of event, having the, the dis, all the displays um, you know, uh, shown on the internet and, and in competitions too. Like when I'm watching at home, I want to see, I want to see my team. Like, you know, traditionally we have the camera focused on a team for a while, then move to another. And when I'm watching at home, I, most of the time I just want to see, you know, my guys, Australian guys competing. And, and I'd also love to see what they're doing on the screen because I can see what they're doing and I can see from their body language how things are going. But I'd love to be seeing, you know, their frame rates and their scores pop up on the screen and, and as they celebrate, that sort of thing. So, um, and the commentary going on, you know, you know team a, you were just finishing yeah they broke the world record this sort of thing that that m make it more like a sporting event and and you know without that people at home don't really know what's going on a lot of the time you know the select overclockers do but for somebody new somebody just starting to do that sort of thing you know they're not always sure so i'd like to see you know the commentary like like we had at the intel event running the whole time Um, I'd like to see screens being displayed and a, a way to select between them at home. And, um, you know, like we had here, multiple cameras set up and, you know, it, it's, it's headed, again, headed in a great direction. We just need to keep pushing and, and we'll, we'll get there like, like the esports are now. The, the keyboard is keep pushing, right? Keep pushing, of <laughs> course, yeah. <laughs> keep pushing it, keep pushing it. Um, so uh, about all this, uh, the coverage and, and so on, so we, we talk about HW button and overclocking in the past. What do you expect for the next future? Do you expect to be a full-time overclocker in the, n in the next few years or you, you will keep your own work and just do that at the OBS, uh, meeting friends and so on? I, I'm not sure. I, I, think, I think there will be people doing that. I don't know if I'll be one of them. Like I kind of like having overclocking as a hobby and having my workers work and because uh, I enjoy it as a hobby I'm not sure if I'd enjoy it if I did it all the time but I think how we're he the direction we're headed there's already people doing that you know there's four or five guys that that's their job um, and I'm sure there's going to be more in the future and maybe in five or ten years we if, if overclocking is still happening in five or ten years we're at a stage where people can make a living off competitions you know it's happening in esports and if you said that 10 years ago people would you know say no, what nuts. yeah what are you talking about so we we may be at that you know um alan splave won ten thousand dollars you know if that was a uh, if that was 10 times that prize somebody might be able to not not work for a year off of that sort of prize money so and the esports prize money is already in the millions i mean w w 
the difference with esports is you've got millions of people playing a game and they can relate to it and we're not at that point yet but um, maybe with some tweaks to our format we can get to 5% of what they are and, and then it becomes feasible to just be a competition venture you know so it, it's I, I think it's um, it's something that may happen and you know, maybe next year we've got 10 people doing it, not five, and then we've got 20 and then 50. So it's, it, it looks very positive. I see. Um, thanks for your time. I uh, really appreciate yeah. having you here. Uh, congratulations again on breaking the Fire Strike Extreme World Record. Thanks, and we hope to see you again uh, on live or on the live competitions uh, anytime will. soon. <laughs> thanks. Cheers.